Good morning, YouTube, and happy Friday. I am in early this morning. I think I'm finally settling into a schedule. It's been a little rough the last few days of school, but I've been getting up in the morning, probably around like 4.55, 4.50, getting my workout in, and then I'm able to get into school about a half hour to 45 minutes early. Um, so it's been a little bit of an easier time in the morning trying to get myself settled. So this morning, I'm spending time getting ready for the day. Um, in my CP class, I am doing Doing some phenomenaling with the students. Um, we're going to be talking about explanatory models and basically things that you need to include whenever you're creating a particle diagram of some kind. Um, and then my AP students have their second test next week. So today they're going to be doing some whiteboarding. Um, we're going to be looking at combustion analysis, calculations with empirical molecular formulas, and then um, they're going to have an opportunity to choose what they want to do. So I'm going to give them three choices. They can work on their practice test, they can work on OWL problems, or they can finish the lab calculations from this lab this past week. So I'm gonna go get ready for my day. Um, of course, as always, I will check in with you guys a little bit later on. I just finished with my classes for the day and I had every intention of popping on here and giving you more specifics about what I'm doing with my classes, but I think I'm just getting used to the schedule. Um, this isn't even a full week of school. We had off yesterday due to the holiday. So now we're back in school and I'm still just trying to kind of get my feet on the ground. It's a little different because last year we didn't have lab periods and it was my first time teaching AP at this school but this year I have my CP class in the morning and then I have my two AP classes back to back and then I've got my CP class at the end of the day so I'm having some difficulties like trying to switch back and forth between the different levels because not every class is using the same materials obviously so it makes it a little difficult um, but I'm doing my best I do feel like I don't always feel so like settled and organized as I usually do, um, but thank God I have my own classroom this year because I can only imagine doing that if I didn't. I think that I'll settle in eventually as I get more used to my schedule. As far as like what I was doing with my classes today, for my CP class today, it was kind of like a mishmash of things. It was a weird day. My students in the first class was, they were supposed to take a quiz today, but they instead had like a survey that they needed to do. I thought that they were pulling the kids out to take this survey, but they ended up staying in class. So that's kind of a weird thing because I was thinking to myself like, okay, if they just pull the kids out that I can still continue class as usual. But unfortunately I wasn't able to do that. There were like 17 students taking the survey. So, um, and it was a really long one. They took like pretty much the whole period. So they didn't actually have their quiz today and their modeling activity, but I did do it with my period nine class. And so in that class, we started off the day by, you know, seeing if they had any questions. They took a quick quiz on classification of matter. And then we talked about explanatory models. And in order to get the students thinking about explanatory models, I gave them a reading, just like a little short reading. It's about three quarters of a page. And I gave them highlighters and I said, you know, highlight, underline. But the whole point of this is to learn how to create a model. And then we talk about the importance of the fact that these are really supposed to be explanatory models and they're supposed to explain something. After the students kind of did their highlighting and annotating of that piece of paper that explains an explanatory model, I then jogged their memory about the classification of matter team activity that we did. And so I asked the students, based off of the criteria in that box, based on the explanatory model sheet, I asked them you know, to critique that model. So the model looks like something like this. Um, I love this team activity. It was a lot of fun. They did a great job with it this week. But I asked them to just critique based off of what they saw, like what was really good about this model? And then I also asked them how could they improve it? And so they did a great job making sure that they kind of cross everything off the list. So like, for example, like models should include labels. And they said they did a great job, you know, with labels. And they said they did a great job with illustrating what a chemical bond is. And they were able to infer other pieces of information that weren't given in this model to help them understand what the model's conveying. And so that was a really cool thing. And then one of the things that I absolutely loved about it is they said one improvement that they could make with this model is actually grouping 
all the different types of substances together. So for example, taking all the elements, putting them together, take all the compounds, put them together, right? So that would also help an observer that's looking at the model to understand what's going on. So I thought that was a wonderful thing that they recognized. I was like, wow, I didn't even think about that. That was really smart. So it was really cool to hear them share that out. I did make a little quick handout for them for explanatory models and the criteria to be an effective model. And so it's basically like a half sheet of paper. I think I might have it here, let me see. I might have it over here. Let's see. So I hope I have it. It's just like a little, oh yeah, I do. So this is something that I actually gave away in my um, phenomenaling um, experience. If anybody went to the New Jersey Science Convention or you um, went to my AACT webinar. So I give this to students and so this is what I use to help the students. They can use this on tests and quizzes whenever I ask them to make models but I really like this because it's almost like a checklist of things that the models need to include. And so I copy it on cardstock so they have an easier time finding it. It's in a different color um, and then I also don't want it to fall out of the binder so that's why I also use thicker paper. So that's how I use this and I ask the students to keep this out because their modeling activity was for them to model the different states of matter. So I asked them to differentiate the different states of matter, pretend they have microscope eyes, and use that in order to differentiate between what's going on on the particle level between solids, liquids, and gases, specific to water. Of course, it's very, very common. The purpose of this activity was to give me an idea of what they need help with, um, see any misconceptions, allows me to have conversations with them about how to show different things in their model. I wanted to make sure that they included their zoom in bubbles. Um, they wanted to include something like, you know, with particle motion. So I have the whiteboards. So I thought I would show you guys what they did. And um, I think overall, I think it went really well. Okay, here we are. Here's one of the first models. Um, again, not, not bad right? You can definitely see, you know, there are some inaccuracies, right? Particle with no movement, right? So these are all things that we need to think about. Um, I like how they have the little lines here indicating movement. Here's another one. So what I love so much about these models is it really helps me to understand like what they know and what they need help with and what misconceptions they have. And so if I look at this, it's interesting. So they've got the temperatures listed. How cool, right? Not bad. Um, pretty interesting what they have here. And I want to read this too. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So that's another one, right? Overall, like I said, pretty good job. Gives me an idea of like some of the things that I need to work on with them. But most of all, I just wanted to make sure that they could kind of used to drawing models, right? That's really the whole point of this. And, um, I love this one. I love how they included the different arrows, right? I like how they're actually including what the particles are. And then here's another one. So not too bad. It was a really quick modeling activity, but I think it was really effective in helping me understand what they know and what they don't know. So I think that's it for me. I have some grading to do. I'm gonna go and do that, but I hope you are enjoying being with your students. I just, even though I'm exhausted, I absolutely love having students in class. That is the one thing that I have just missed, that connection with my kids. So it really helps propel me to keep creating and doing more things for my students and helping them. And, you know, it's uh, it feeds my teaching soul. So I hope you all are feeling that way, too. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and I will check in with you all next week. Take care. Bye.